Yeah, I think everybody's heard of Lucy. Yeah? Uh, if you know about one ape man, it would be Lucy, and of course, arguably, it's not a man, it's an ape woman, which makes it almost impossible to disagree with now. Uh, <laughs> the scientific name for Lucy, of course, is not Lucy. Uh, the name Lucy was chosen for this particular organism because at the time they found it uh, in uh, Ethiopia, uh, in the Afar region of Ethiopia out there in the desert, uh, the, the scientists who found it uh, were listening to what was a popular song at that time by the Beatles called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, which was an acronym for LSD, the drug of choice of that time. And so they called this, uh, this specimen Lucy. And that name has come to be applied to all of the specimens. In other words, you say Lucy, you're not just talking necessarily about this one particular specimen, but the other, uh, whose scientific name is Australopithecus afarensis. Uh, let's take that name apart, first of all. Australo is like in Australia, it means the south. So my boss, Ken Ham, says he's from the deep south, <laughs> Australia. Uh, so Australia means south or southern, and Pithecus, wherever you find it, means ape. So Australopithecus means southern ape. Whatever else we can say about Lucy, just for starters, she is an ape. And her name indicates she is an ape. Some would say, ah, but a very special type of an ape, uh, an ape-like uh, ape creature. It's interesting. We always say people evolved from reptiles or we evolved from bacteria or we evolved from stardust. But when it comes to our ape ancestors, it's never we evolved from apes. It's always ape-like creatures. Because we have apes alive today and nobody says the apes today are turning into humans. So these apes have to be different from the kind of apes we have today. And uh, so they call them ape-like creatures. And Lucy is one of the most, well, the best known ape-like creature. Uh, she's short, about the size of a chimp, uh, less than four feet tall. Um, we don't know what her hair looked like, although I think if we were to guess something like a chimp, we wouldn't be far off, covered the body. Uh, she had uh, long arms, relatively long arms, as you'd expect to see in a simian creature. She had a suspensory adapted hand, that is the fingers are highly curved, in fact, uh, a study done on the radius of curvature of the fingers and toes of Lucy showed that when you compare this curvature with that of living apes, she had highly curved fingers and toes even compared to living apes. So it would not be the relatively straight fingers and toes that we have. Uh, the skull, there really isn't much about it that would ever suggest we had a human skull. Uh, let me just go through a quick series of things absolutely distinctive for apes that you see in Lucy. Sloped face, just like a ski slope, right on down. Uh, humans have a vertical face, so if we look at Neanderthals, for example, or Cro-Magnon man, or most of the individuals called Homo erectus, you have that vertical face. And it's vertical compared to the cheekbone, so if you put a line out the cheekbone to the face, <laughs> that vertical appearance uh, is uh, distinctive uh, of humans compared to apes, all of whom have a sloped face. And then the flat forehead. Lucy has a very flat forehead. Uh, the orbits of the eyes are goggle-eyed. I talked about a lot of these things the other day. Uh, cranial capacity is small by ape standards. Now, normally apes have about a third the size brain that humans would. So whereas human brain range is, say, uh, 700 cc's up to 2 liter, with a liter and a half being pretty average, uh, in apes, uh, like Lucy, uh, 300 to 500, occasionally 600 cc's. So overall, about a third the size, with the, with the size of the brain correlating with the size of the body. So Lucy was a small creature, not like a gorilla, more like a small chimp. And uh, the brain was proportionately small, as you'd expect for, for that kind of animal. Uh, one of the ways we can tell, of course, you always try to argue that Lucy walked as we do, uh, on two legs, it was bipedal. Well, we have to be careful here. There are a lot of creatures capable of walking temporarily on two legs. In the circus, I've seen an elephant walk on two legs. 
Uh, I've seen dogs that walk on two legs. In fact, just recently on the Internet was a dog that seems to walk no other way but on two legs. It was amazing. Uh, but these are not obligate bipeds. These are quadrupeds that are capable for varying periods of time to walk on two legs. And so chimps can do it for short periods of time. And there's a reason they only do it for a short period of time. One is their, their knees are always slightly bent, so they have to support their weight on bent knees, whereas we can lock our knee in a straight configuration. And it takes much, like, much less energy to stand on two legs. Uh, but the pelvis, if you look at the, the hip bones, the pelvis, you can pretty well tell whether a creature walked as we do or not. Uh, if you look down at the pelvis of Lucy from above, uh, the hip bones, the iliac blades, stick straight out. And uh, this is a typical simian or ape pelvis. I compare it to like the handles of a scooter. They just go straight out. If you look at the pelvis from above looking down on it in a human, the pelvis forms a kind of a half circle, sort of like the handlebars of a tricycle. And without that shape, you can't walk the way a human does. And the reason is because of two muscles called the gluteus medius. Uh, in humans, they run down the side from that curved pelvis, and they stabilize our hips. So whenever we lift our left foot, the right gluteus medius tightens up enough that that hip doesn't drop. And when we lift our right foot, the left gluteus medius tightens up just enough that the right hip doesn't drop. Because after all, these are ball socket joints. Uh, so we can walk uh, keeping a very smooth, steady bearing with our hips essentially parallel to the ground. With an ape, the gluteus medius, because of the shape of the pelvis, has to run down the back. Not down the side like a pair of holsters, but down the back. And so the same bones with the same names and the same muscles, homology is real, do two completely different jobs. In the case of all apes, that shape of the pelvis makes the gluteus medius a uh, extensor from the hip. That is, if your body is bent over, those muscles would help you to straighten out again. And if you look at the posture of an ape, that's an important muscle to have because they're bent kneed and their backbone is curved. So their body is slumped forward, often walking on their knuckles. And uh, this muscle keeps them from falling forward. It, it bends them back. So same muscle, same bones have two different functions. So when I look at Lucy's hips, there have been attempts to try to modify them and change them and take them apart and reassemble them, but they're ape hips. Probably the best evidence from an evolutionist point of view that Lucy walked the way we do are some footprints found in Latoli, Tanzania. But this is 1,000 miles away, 1,500 kilometers away. Uh, from Ethiopia in the Afar region where Lucy is found. So uh, there, Mary Leakey, the famous Leakey family, found uh, a long series of footprints, not just one or two, but dozens, and uh, of at least two individuals, a bigger individual and a smaller individual, and it shows the typical human stride with the outpointed toes. The ball of the foot hits the ground, and then the weight goes the outside of the foot to the little toe, and then it transfers across, and we push off with the big toe. No other creature walks that way, and yet these footprints show the evidence of walking in that manner. Also, these footprints that Mary Leakey found in Latoli, Tanzania, have a very well-developed arch, so uh, these were not flat feet. <laughs> Some humans, and essentially all apes, have flat feet. Uh, I've looked at these footprints. I actually saw Mary Leakey give a presentation on them and had a chance to even briefly talk with her about them. They're indistinguishable from modern human footprints. But because they were, in quotes, dated at 3.66 million years old, which puts them in the 3 million year range of Lucy, it's argued that a creature like Lucy made these footprints. Well, I can tell you, whoever made the footprints walked on two feet, just the way you and I do with the same stride, everything. By the way, when an ape lifts its foot, it has a choice. To make a step, it can either fall down that way or it can take its upper body and throw it over the planted foot. And that's why you see the upper body of the ape go from side to side. That's because their gluteus medius is not in a position to stabilize the hip. They have to keep throwing the weight. So when I look at a pelvis like Lucy has, she would have had to walk the way an ape walks with a lot of upper body side-to-side -side motion. 
Uh, finally, uh, the real clincher when it comes to ape men is cultural evidence. When you find uh, humans in the fossil record, and they're there, they're very rare, but they're there, you almost always find some hint of cultural evidence, habitations, tools, musical instruments. For example, Neanderthals have been found buried with what appear to be flutes, with holes and positions to be playable, uh, even a cosmetics kit, uh, a couple of scallop shells hinged with different pigments on the inside. And when you're dealing with Neanderthal, Cro-Magnon, uh, some of the Homo erectus, you clearly are talking about human beings, not just because you have a human body to look at, which has distinctive features, but you have culture. There's no culture associated with Australopithecines like Lucy. Uh, there's no tools, habitation, use of fire, any of this kind of thing. But uh, as somebody once said, uh, if you're convinced that apes evolved into humans and then you look at the apes that we have in the fossil record, some of those apes just have to be our ancestors or else we wouldn't have any. And that's kind of the way the argument goes. And again, it shows the power of starting assumptions. If you begin with the absolute certainty that we did, in fact, come from ape-like creatures, uh, then you'll be satisfied with much more meager evidence than somebody who raises the question, did we really come from <laughs> ape-like creatures? Uh, you probably heard a comment that was made by an individual who picked up a very tiny fragment of a molar and immediately determined uh, that it was from uh, an ape-like ancestor of humans. And when he was interviewed by the media, he said, man, he says, uh, I, I, I wouldn't have seen it if I hadn't believed it. It's just amazing. <laughs> and a lot of evolutions like that, they wouldn't have seen it if they hadn't believed it up front with their starting assumptions. So no, Lucy is clearly an ape-like creature. And uh, People say, why don't we find more humans in the fossil record? I have a better question. Why don't we find more bony creatures in the fossil record? Only a very tiny percentage of all fossils are bony creatures, uh, less than a percent. And most of them are fish, by the way. When you get down to primates, it's an incredibly tiny fraction of 0. 0.0000 percent. Uh, it doesn't mean we don't have enough evidence to come to conclusions because over time we've grounded up enough of the fossils that I think we can make decent conclusions about whether man evolved from apes or not. But the fossil record is really skewed towards marine invertebrates. I sometimes tell people I'm a psychic if they've ever picked up a, a fossil from the ground, not from a fossil shop, that I can just do this and, and tell them what sort of fossil they picked up. And so then I'll try marine invertebrate. How did you know? <laughs> because 95% of all fossils are marine invertebrates. Now, why is it that that should be? There's something about the way the fossil record that was produced that favored uh, the bearing of sessile, i.e. non-modal, uh, marine invertebrates. It's exactly what you'd expect in a flood, the clams and the corals and Oysters would get buried right where they were, and anything they could get to higher ground or try to escape would at least attempt for a while. 